If you're an elementary music teacher, chances are one of the hardest parts of the day for you is when you get your fourth and fifth graders. Fourth and fifth grade can be difficult because they're kind of in that weird like, I'm not a little kid, but I'm not a grown up area. And so it's a hard to kind of reach them at that age. But that doesn't mean you can't. Today we're gonna to talk about some movement activities you can use with your fourth and fifth graders to make sure they are engaged, having fun, enjoying things, and also getting their big kid wiggles out because you know they can't sit still either. Now before we get started, I do wanna mention one really important thing, that fifth graders are still kids. I know it doesn't seem like it because they're all, you know, like, oh, look at my iPhone, oh, look, I have an Apple Watch, and I'm like, what the heck? Like, you know what was awesome when I was in fifth grade? those pens that had like the four different colors. Anyway, um, so it can be difficult to see them as kids, but I will tell you a quick story. During one of these activities, we were using a parachute in my classroom one year, and I look over, and this kid who has like never even smiled, never, like he just is one of those like, I'm just too cool. I look over and he's like, with the parachute. In that moment and many other moments like that, I'm like, oh my gosh, these kids are still kids. And especially if you're at one of those schools like mine where maybe your students are being thrust into adult situations, like maybe they're taking care of their little siblings and you know, having to make these decisions that honestly they just shouldn't have to do, then having this safe space in the music room where they can play and be a little more little kiddish is great. With that said, we're going over movement activities today. And so some of them you might be like, oh, my fifth graders won't like that. But I promise if you approach it the correct way and if you enjoy it and if you, you know, make it seem like they're gonna enjoy it, they will love it because they are so much fun. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure you hit the like and the subscribe button. That really helps me out. So without further ado, let's hop right on in. All right, all of these are like really simple ones that you can do pretty much any time of year, pretty much for any concept, for any, just anything, anything. They're really simple and they're fun. So my first one is called Rhythm Stomp. This is one of my favorite ways to incorporate reading rhythms and also moving our bodies. So what we do very, very simply is instead of clapping rhythms or saying rhythms, we put them in our feet. So this requires the kids to stand up and they stomp it. If you want to have a lot of fun, you can change the different places where they're going to keep the, where they're going to play the rhythm. So they could like snap one, clap one, stomp one, all of those different things. I've also seen quite a few play alongs that are body percussion play alongs on YouTube that are a lot of fun and get kids reading rhythms and also moving like their whole body. So you could definitely check those out. Just search body percussion play along and you'll find it. It's pretty simple and there's a lot of really fun ones on there that my fifth graders have loved. But you can even do this just with like, you know, old school rhythm cards. Remember when we like printed things out? No? Well, you can and you can still use those and they work just fine. Number two is one you're probably sick of hearing me talk about and that is stick figure movements. Now I thought I had some stick figures printed out but apparently I don't, you know, I'm not gonna lie. It was really convenient when I was teaching online from my house for these videos. But now that I'm teaching online from the school, my stuff, I keep forgetting to bring things home. So anyway, yeah, regardless, stick figure movement is really fun. I love to use it like the first week of school and usually again in January. And anytime I want them to listen to something they might not like. And so basically all you do is you have some papers that have different stick figure shapes on them. I have some in my TPT shop. I will link below. They're super cheap. I think it's like the cheapest thing in my store. So all you do is you just hold them up and the kids match the stick figures movement. So you can make any different ones. You can do like partner ones or three people ones, whatever you would like to do. And then I just change them usually like every four beats. To make it a little more interesting, I love to add like backing tracks. So, you know, like hip hop, backing tracks or you could also add just any kind of music this is a great chance to add maybe some music you wouldn't normally play or if you're doing a lesson where maybe you're listening to some music that the kids might not be sure about it's a really good way to get them to listen to something in like a safe environment so it's not like what the heck is that it's like oh i'm you know focused on this and then the music's just kind of there and they don't realize it at first it's also like maybe if you want to incorporate a pop song. I know I like the idea of incorporating pop songs, but I have a really hard time figuring out like actually how to put them in my curriculum. This is a really good way to do that like as a nice warm up at the beginning or if you want to feature like 
different songs from different people, you can do that. You can also do it without the song and that's fine too. It's extra fun when you um, switch up the pattern after a while. So sometimes I'll start going backwards or I will also put like a blank one in. And so when you get to the blank one, then you can make up whatever you want. Super fun. I will leave a link to both my stick figures and a blog post where I talk about like four or six different ways that you can use the stick figure movement cards. So click the link below and check that out because there's a lot of different things that you can do and they're so simple and so easy and so much fun. All right, the next one is another way you can incorporate some of your pop songs or just for fun and that is body drum set. So this is one that I learned from Little Kids Rock. I will link their website down below. Actually, I will link the particular song we used. So we did the song Counting Stars along with this and it was really easy, which is why I picked it, but it was also really fun and I just, I like that song. They liked the song, so it worked out really well. And basically you just assign different drum parts to different parts of your body. So like the bass drum would be your leg and you would stomp every time the bass drum plays. You can pat your legs for the snare drum. You can do like up here for your hi-hat and different things like that you could click together if there's like sticks clicking together. All of those things work just great. And then all you have to do is find like an iconic thing where they have the pictures of the drums so you know what to play. Do you know what I'm talking about? I'll pop one up here and I will also link to it down below. So I get mine off of Little Kids Rock and it just says like, oh, the bass drum plays on beat one and the hi-hat plays on beat two and four and stuff like that. And so we just learn it and then we do it along with the song and it's really fun, really easy way to get them moving without realizing they're moving. They're also playing rhythms without realizing they're playing rhythms and it's just a lot of fun. All right, we had to stand up for the next one and this is the song One Bottle of Pop. I learned this actually at a choir camp and and it's just so much fun. And so I love to use this with my fourth and fifth graders, especially in the spring when they're kind of like, I don't want to sing, but I want them to sing. So we do it anyway. So I will sing the whole thing for you and show you the actions. The first one is, um, I just always say thumbs up, thumbs to the side. And that's how we start. And it goes like this. One bottle of pop, two bottle of pop, three bottle of pop, four bottle of pop, five bottle of pop, six bottle of pop, seven bottle of pop, pop. Don't throw your trash in my backyard, my backyard, my backyard. Don't throw your trash in my backyard, my backyard's full. Fish and chips and vinegar, vinegar, vinegar. Fish and chips and vinegar, vinegar and pop. So really, really easy, really simple movements, really simple song, but it's a lot of fun. Then we like to take it up a notch and make it into a round. And I like this for a round because the different sections are so different that it's easier for them to stick to what they are supposed to be doing on their section. We've also done this song on Zoom, teaching online. I've, I just, you know, hit the mute button. So it's sad you can't hear them, but they do really like it because it's just kind of fun and it's easy little movement activity. So there you go. Another one we have to stand up to talk about and that is Pizza Pizza Daddy. -O. This song I found by chance and it is a hit. It is so much fun. So what you do is you sing this song and then the magic part is when it says Pizza Pizza Daddy. -O. Yes, I said that right. <laughs> you are moving your feet in and out, which the kids just think is hilarious. So I'll show you with, oh, you can't even like see my feet. So what is the point of standing up? I don't know. Um, so I'll back the camera up in a second. But basically it goes, um, I always say, out, cross, out, cross, together is the pattern. Let me back you up so you can see. All right, so our pattern is out, cross, out, cross, together. And then we go again and out, cross, out, cross together. So that happens every time you say pizza, pizza, daddy, yo. So I'll sing the song. Um, the beginning is supposed to be Annie has a boyfriend. I always just do friend because I feel like that's a little bit, you know, better. I really don't want to encourage them to have boyfriends when they are in fifth grade. So here we go. Um, Annie has a friend, pizza, pizza, daddy, yo, how do I know it? Pizza, pizza, daddy, yo, because she told me, pizza, pizza, daddy, yo. Now, how you play this is one person comes up to the front or in the middle of the circle and you put your their name in instead of Annie and then, can you even see my head? You put their name in instead of Annie and then after that you get to have them pick what you're gonna do. So, um, I usually have them do two actions, so they'll do like snap it and then like, pet will do those two. So the person up front calls out what they're going to say. So they'll say, let's snap it. And then we all go, snap it, snap it, daddy-o. And they'll say, 
let's party, 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 daddy ho. And then they'll say, let's end it. And they're supposed to cover their eyes and turn around in a circle and then whoever they are pointing to is the next person to go. But honestly, I usually just have the kids raise their hand if they wanna go and then they pick someone with their hand up who hasn't gone before because it's easier. So I'm gonna run through the whole thing and I'll say Miss Davis because I'm the one doing it. And I always do it a couple of times myself to show them lots of different things that they could do. So it goes like this. Miss Davis has a friend. Pizza, pizza, daddy, yo, how do I know it? Pizza, pizza, daddy, yo, because she told me. Pizza, pizza, daddy, yo. Let's snap it, snap it, snap it, daddy, yo. Let's stomp it, stomp it, stomp it, daddy, yo. Let's end it, end it, end it, daddy, yo. And then you repeat again with the next person. I know it sounds so, so silly, but it is so much fun. And even the like toughest, coolest, you know, boy fifth graders are like, I'm too cool for this. Have so much fun. All right, the next thing is anything that goes along with a parachute. If you don't have a parachute in your classroom, I highly recommend that you get one. They are so, 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 so much fun. So we do this with, oh, I don't even know. The, I think it's just the Star Wars theme, the bum, 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 that one. And so at the beginning we do like little tiny shakes and then once it actually starts with that part I just sang for you beautifully, then we go up for four nice and slowly and then down for four nice and slowly. On the B section, I have them walk in a circle to the B section. And then at the end, we just go back to those little, little shakes. So easy, easy, easy peasy. You can do it in like one class period and it's so much fun. I promise. And also the kids who like Star Wars are gonna be like, this is Star Wars. I'm like, yeah, it is. It's so great, isn't it? Now, obviously if you're watching this when this comes out, it's not an option because you're probably either virtual or you're not supposed to be touching other things or having kids closer than six feet away. But eventually, I believe that it'll go away and you'll be able to use the parachute again. So I did not make up that um, routine. I will link it down below and I will also link the Artie Almina book, Parachutes and Ribbons and Scarves or Scarves and Ribbons Parachutes. I don't know, those three things in some kind of order. And it is my absolute favorite book. It is so much fun. I use it with all of my classes and it's just, it's great. I use it all the year round. So definitely check that one out as well. All right, the next one is super, super easy and I call that beat and freeze or sometimes I call it statues. I don't know, I call it different things. Basically I take a drum and I play eight beats on the eight eight beats on the drum and the first one is louder than the rest what they do is on the loud one they have to make a pose like a statue and then they hold it and then the next time we get back to your downbeat then they pick a different pose so this allows them plenty of time to think about it as they're going i like to change the tempo so we'll speed it up we'll slow it down and do just all these different things and it is so so, so much fun, especially when we start getting faster and then I just start playing all of them loud and so they're like, it's hilarious and also so much fun. If you have kids who are a little more shy about moving and stuff, I tell them you don't have to do anything fancy, but you do have to move. So even if it's just like, like that counts, you just gotta do something. And so I have them all, they all get like, they get really into it, like really into it. It's hilarious. and. So much fun. And you can totally use that with any grade. The next one is, uh, I guess it's not really a movement song, but I wanted to include it because it's so much fun. So this is a singing game that, again, you can't play now, but you hopefully will get to play in the future. If you're watching this future, you're like, oh, I remember those days and I'm glad they're not here. Um, so this is a quakwa. This is an Israeli beat passing game that I use with my fourth and fifth graders and they love it. It is so much fun. So the song goes, Ah, qua qua de la oma, qua qua qua, del sima trinko, trinko trinko la, valo, 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 one, two, three, four, five. Oh, trinko trinko tra, not trinko trinko la. Sorry. Um, anyway, so all they do is they sit and they have one hand on top of the person's over here, one hand underneath the other person's here, and they pass the beat in a circle while we sing, and then whoever gets landed on, 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 five is the person who's out it's not really moving because you're just like moving your hands but it is a lot of fun and in injects kind of the same energy that movement does because there's just like an energy that you get in the room when all of the kids are dancing and stuff like that that you get also when you're doing this all right so that's all for my list for today i do have a lot more that we could talk about but i'm gonna end it here you might be like becca 
You didn't mention folk dancing. I know, I did that on purpose. I purposely did not mention any folk dances because I feel like that's an easier thing to find than just like, oh, I want a quick movement activity versus like, oh, we're gonna learn a folk dance. Like those are just very different things. So maybe we'll do a different video with my favorite folk dances. Let me know if you'd be interested in that. If you made it all the way to the end of the video, I would love to know your favorite movement activities for fourth and fifth grade down below. Thank you so much for watching. Hit the like and subscribe and I will see you next time. And yes, there will also be second and third grade and first and sec, no, kindergarten, first grade and second and third grade versions of this video. So again, hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.